And I want to go live now to Tamika Mallory. She's there in Texas. Uh, she's co-founder of Until Freedom. They have been, they travel there uh, with a significant number of supplies, not just to Del Rio, but to other parts of Texas as well. Uh, Tamika, uh, how has the trip been going thus far? Hey, thank you so much for rolling me on and to the panel. Um, of, of all my good people who are there. Um, I was actually really listening in and, and, and focusing on the history because I think a lot of people, even folks who um, are American, Haitian Americans, don't necessarily understand the significance of what is happening at the border and what is happening to uh, the Haitian people. Um, we are actually returning back to Dallas after having spent the entire night and all day today traveling to Del Rio, bringing um, a truck full of resources and also going to the bridge, under the bridge, where the encampment uh, site was uh, to, to take a tour. Um, once we got to the encampment site today, we learned um, very quickly that everyone had been removed. All of those who were under the bridge had been removed by buses that they say um, were being uh, moved all night long, buses showing up to clear out the, the space. Uh, and so we did go. We learned a lot. We asked a lot of questions. They did give us a tour. Um, and when I say us, I'm speaking of Until Freedom, my organization, um, along with um, uh, relief gang, uh, which is Brother Trader Truth that many of you know from doing relief work across, uh, particularly across Louisiana and Texas um, in several earthquakes. Um, and we worked with some of the Haitian elected officials and, of course, the organization that we're supporting and working very closely with called Haitian Bridge. Uh, we all went together uh, to, the, to this area and had the tour. And then we left there and we went to a processing center um, it is a location that we have not named publicly because there were white supremacists that showed up with weapons um, just a couple of days ago, scaring families and also those individuals who actually run the facility. Um, you know, there, there are people here who are doing great work with not a lot of hands um, but, and not a lot of resources, but they're doing amazing work. And I think the thing that's important is for folks to know that this is not new to them. They've been doing this work for years. Haitian Bridge um, and the young woman, Ms. Gurleen, who runs that organization, has been engaged in relief efforts for at least six years. Uh, and the location that we went to today, they've been there operating for a long time. It just so happens that this particular time period has been heightened in terms of those numbers of, of individuals who have crossed into Del Rio. And also, of course, the inhumane treatment that we all watched in the videos and images um, that I've, I've you know, seen on your show today. Um, but they are always dealing with migration. And in fact, people are still coming. And we've been told that by Border Patrol that they expect that between 10 and 14,000 people will show up again in the coming days. There are people waiting on the Mexican, on the Mexico side. Oh, sorry. Sorry if that cut off. Um, but there are people waiting on the Mexico side of the border uh, trying to get in. Uh, they say that the situation on that side is very serious, it's very tense, and there are people who have left um, the Texas side of the border to go over there to bring aid. We partnered with this particular processing center, and Linda Sarsour, who we had on last night, um, my, my partner at Until Freedom and I, were allowed to go into the processing center to see families, um, to be able to meet with people and to assure them that there are many of us uh, American citizens who support them and are, 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 you know, standing with them. And then we also were able to unload the truck with all of the, our volunteers and supporters uh, so that they have access to supplies, much needed supplies. So the supplies that y'all gathered in Dallas, um, what happened with those? Did y'all distribute to other places, to other people? What yes. happened? Yeah, so the supplies that we uh, have been collected at Friendship West, which is Dr. Freddie Haynes's church, uh, they are being distributed today and be, and from you know now on until everything is gone from this particular facility. As I said, they deal with uh, refugees, migrants all the time. Um, and so this is not new for them. This is a very known, well-known location that people show up at for help. Um, and so the, the supplies 
are there, and, and there were families, many families inside of this facility today, and they will have access to the supplies. There's also a nearby church that is going to uh, facilitate or hold on to anything that is left over so that when the next group of people come across the waters, that they have these supplies ready, readily available to give to them. We also sent other trucks um, to different locations. So we had people contacting us with trucks full. We were unable, because of our manpower, to bring those trucks down into this area. As I said, it's very sensitive. People are trying to protect the identity of those individuals that are inside of these facilities because there are white supremacists who are showing up um, and causing danger and, of course, fear to those individuals who have crossed the, the border. And therefore, they do not want to make pop and circumstance with lots of people and cameras. And so we were trying to adhere to that. And therefore, we sent trucks to Houston, which is where an ICE facility is located that people have been going to, um, and they will be released from those facilities. What we learned under the bridge today is that from that facility, there, and of course, not facility, from that holding place, that encampment site, there is no, um, thank you, someone back here helping with sound, Attorney Angelo Pinto. Um, uh, but from underneath the bridge, there is no uh, deportation happening from that bridge particularly. There's also no COVID testing, no ability to quarantine. Uh, we did not see any anything about showers. And I think that, in fact, when they gave us the list of what services and resources were available, they did not mention showers. It's important to note that the individuals that we saw in the video uh, that were obviously being whipped by people, by Border Patrol on those horses, those individuals, many of them were returning from a food run in Mexico. They slip out often to be able to get food because they are only served two times a day by um, the United States government. And so they slipped out to go over to get food and come back. And when they, when they were returning, that is where that incident happened. So um, you, there's, it's a major crisis. And again, there are more people coming. And hopefully, the resources that we have left there will easily get to them, because they were not allowing. And we knew that when we came, that we could not bring um, the, the supplies into the area where the encampment site <coughs> is located. Um, and so we had to make sure that it is in a facility where there are actual families who have been released to go there to find their families and to be processed. Tamika, uh, we appreciate it. This is why uh, we have this platform, um, because uh, otherwise, how would the word get out other than social media? And so uh, thanks for breaking it all down for us. Uh, great job uh, there and certainly uh, safe uh, traveling back uh, on those uh, Texas highways. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you much, Roland. Thank you. Love you as well. Folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own. A Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Stay hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?